Welcome back to the Fourier Baseball Podcast, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we finally wrap up the AL Mid with actually a, not a mid team, the Cleveland Guardians, but then we head back to striving for mediocrity, the Oakland Athletics. I'm with Tom today. Stavs is busy traveling. Uh, he'll be back for the other th- uh, the other two predictions and our WBC preview that'll come out later this week, or recap, not a preview. How are you doing today, Tom? Doing good. I'm ready to talk about the division favorite and then the you know worst team in baseball. The, Oakland, the division Oakland Athletic. not favorites. Yeah, the division losers. So these two organizations are both run under the money ball principle. Obviously, it established itself in Oakland. Um, clearly, the Guardians have done a much better job at that recently. Uh, at least in the past five years, they've become just a stronghold for pitching development. Last year, they kind of came out of nowhere and took over the AL Central. It's not like a, a great accomplishment to do that. Uh, but they did actually take the New York Yankees to five games in the ALDS, and they really seemed like they could have won it. I genuinely think they could have yeah. taken that series from the Yankees. It's just really they lacked a second thump bat outside of Jose Ramirez. Yeah, and it really felt like a magic team. Honestly, there was a lot of clutch moments from this team, I um, mean, starting from Oscar Gonzalez. I mean, there was – this team has some magic behind them, and I know they're still young, so they're going to be back in that position again. Just couldn't overpower the Yankees, who then went on to lose in four straight games. I feel like they would have probably had a similar fate to the Astros, but maybe a little bit more a little bit more competitive. Um, Shane Bieber came back from injury, and he was really good. The Velo was down, which is a bit surprising. Uh, Jose Ramirez had another top five so- or MVP finish, and Tristan McKenzie was really solid for them. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the velocity on Shane Bieber is a little confusing and concerning, I guess, but um, 200 innings from your number one guy is pretty, you know, pretty valuable. Uh, mm-hmm. Obviously, he had that Cy Young season in 2020 with shortened season, but this year, I mean, it's not the same power pitcher I saw in 2020, but it's definitely still effective. Um, I think that number one spot in the rotation might be up for grabs now, though, with Tristan McKenzie, you know, having a breakout, and he might be mm-hmm. moving forward now. Yeah, I'm looking to see where his velocity or Shane Bieber's velocity is right now in spring training. Um, if this page would ever load, they said it's up a tick from last year, which would be a good sign. He was already really good with the lower velocity; he was in the bottom 10 percent of the league. But if it gets better, it's a better telltale sign that he'll be even as effective as he was in 2020, hopefully, for the Guardians. Their offseason, Tom, it was quite the offseason for them. What did they do? So Owen Miller's gone. Big move. Uh, traded them to traded him to Milwaukee for cash. Uh, coming in, you got two you know, veteran guys now, Josh Bell on a two-year deal, and then Mike Zanino on a one-year deal. I like both of these moves. It's, there's not there's not much volume to their offseason, but this is a very young team, and there are there is no veteran presence in this entire organization. So bringing in two older guys might might be beneficial to this team, and they're actually difference makers on in the on the hitting side as well. And last year, the Guardians like they formed this identity around not striking out, and then you bring in Josh Bell and Mike Zanino, who strike out at a really high clip. But Josh Bell is supposed to be that thump bat that they didn't have in the postseason. And Mike Zanino is kind of just going to serve as a transition catcher, it looks like, until uh, Bo Naylor is ready for the major leagues. Um, they're fine moves. I like them. Yeah, I mean, Mike Mike Zanino has dealt with some injuries. I mean, he was he was good, I think, two years ago. But, you know, injury is a big problem with him. Um, if he can go out and hit 20 – I mean, I think he hit 30 home runs two years ago. If he can go do that again, that would be, um, be pretty valuable. That would be the thump that we're looking for, too. Agreed. And especially Josh Bell, he's supposed to slot into the, the cleanup spot in that lineup. So if he does what he did with, he doesn't even have to be what he was in Washington. If he was a balance between that and San Diego, like a middle ground, he serves his contract right there. 100%. I mean, there, there's not that many holes in this lineup at this point. A lot of young talent coming up. And I mean, they just need that thump bat. So what does that lineup look like? So batting first, you got Stephen Kwan, left field. They got Ahmed Rosario at shortstop. Got the MVP, uh, you know, perennial MVP guy, Jose Ramirez, at third base. Josh Bell at DH. Josh Naylor at first base. Andres Jimenez at second. Oscar Gonzalez at right. Mike Zanino at catcher. And then Miles Straw in center field. So that's a pretty young lineup right there. Um, do you think they'll have a sophomore slump? I mean, maybe a question for later, but do you think they'll have a bit of a sophomore slump with so many young guys coming up? Okay, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna look down the ladder, right? Like Stephen Kwan, he was very solid last year, like does not strike out at all and fantastic defense. I feel like 
that is repeatable. It's just whether he's still going to get the same Babbitt luck or play to that strength as well as he did. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm right there with you. Like, it's guys like Quan and, and Andres Jimenez who are going to have similar Babbitt luck, I think, change up maybe a little bit. But the fielding, you can't really bet on. I mean, that that's going to be pretty consistent, you know? Yeah. And last year, Ahmed Rosario kind of had his best season. Like, he, I mean, it wasn't great by any means, but he'd always been expected to be very good when he was on the Mets and just never really amounted to much. Um, then last year, it wasn't, again, as I said, it wasn't a stellar season by any stretch of the imagination, but it was a quality season. And from the looks of it, he's the biggest shortstop heading into this free agent class. Yeah, I mean, coming off of last year's free agent class, I mean, it's um, a bit of a step down, but I definitely think he he, he was pretty productive. I don't know what the, how, what the war he put up was, but it, it was pretty it was pretty effective for, I mean, uh, not a top shortstop, but a guy that was in this lineup. Yeah, he put up a 2.4 war last year, and it was a little bit offensive heavy. Uh, his defense was not stellar by any means. It was in the third percentile for outs above average, uh, establishing a negative 10 outs below average. Um, that's okay. not great. Yeah. Um, and I don't even think they have a – they have a Brian Rocheo coming up through the system. He's a prospect. He looks to be like a very defensive first shortstop, so maybe he'll take over that spot at some point in the season of Rosario's bat slumps off. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I'm concerned about is kind of the depth. I mean, let's go over the bench real quick. You got Zach Collins, Gabriel Arias, Tyler Freeman, and Will Brennan. I mean, th- there's there's a bit of a lack of depth on this team. Mm-hmm. If someone goes down, I think there's not many people to come in and fill up their spot. Um, what are your thoughts on the depth so, here? As, it, as constructed right now, there's not much depth, but I think they're able to bet a little bit on the youth of this team. Um, yeah. Like right now, I if I looked at this lineup and be like, who's at worst risk for injury? I would say it's Mike Zanino, right? But your top prospect's a catcher. So there's a little bit of balance there. But it's also, this team is perfectly situated to go out into the trade market and make a big acquisition if they need to. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're not spending much money at all. This is a very young team, and there's not much worry yet because of not, not many guys. I mean, you lock down Jose Ramirez. There's not many guys that you're worrying about extending or you know signing for the offseason. Mm-hmm. See, I would, I'm would. i surprised they haven't started to try and extend young players right now because it really looks like they're not going to be able to afford Shade Bieber. Um, but like trying to throw – if Stephen Kwan repeats it, I don't know why they're not trying to throw like a seven-year, $70 million contract his way, something like that. Like trying to lock up the young guys where they're, they want to stay in Cleveland, Cleveland can afford them, and they both they both win from that deal. I mean, yeah, you gotta you gotta take notes from the best. You know, the Braves are someone that a lot of teams could um could take notes from. There's there are probably five guys in this lineup that are young enough to not know their value, and you can probably undersell them pretty heavily for a team that's not trying to spend that much money. I mean, they gotta take advantage of that. Um yeah. there's a lot of all-star potential on this team. Yeah, and like obviously we'll talk about Jose Ramirez in a little bit because you know, we do have to pick an MVP for this team. Um Josh Naylor at first base was actually a very good defensive first baseman last year, which I did not know. And he's kind of just a little bit above average around everything. But you know what? A little bit above average with good defense has its value at first base, which is a stacked position. Yeah, I mean, he and for a guy that hits for, you know, decent power, he kind of does fit the mold still of a guy that doesn't strike out that much. So, I mean, that's just another guardian that, that doesn't strike out. He doesn't walk as much as you'd like, and there's – pretty common theme amongst uh, other players i mean oscar gonzalez walks what like three percent of the time yeah but there's, there's a couple of guys in this lineup that need to you know gain some plate vision but you know they're still following this track and i think josh naylor is definitely an above average first baseman yeah it, he's very solid and we know andre Jimenez's glove is going to be great again it's just whether the bat repeats itself because the dude finished sixth in mvp voting this year he post, posted a 7.4 baseball reference war Posted 12 outs above average at second base. Good OPS. He, he was just, he was good everywhere on the field. Except for walking. But was he, I don't know, why, how is his on-base percentage so high, but his walk rate was so low? Did he get hit by a lot of pitches? Maybe. <laughs> hit by, that's 25 weird. hit by pitches, yes. Man, they're just, yeah, that's targeting right there. I mean, he almost had as many hit by pitches as he did walks. I'm expecting a slight sophomore slump. 
from Andres Jimenez. I think him more than more so than Steven Kwan and more so than Oscar Gonzalez. Do you agree with that? Yeah, especially just now learning about that hit by pitch number. Like that's not something you can count yeah. on because if you take you know those yeah. twenty five hit by pitches out of the equation and turn it down to five, you're looking at a much less competitive on base percentage, and that drops that OPS probably to eight hundred. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I agree. I, I just, I mean, you can't bet against him yet. I He seems to have proved us wrong last year, so, you know, maybe he'll be the same this year. That's definitely true. And so looking at what really catapulted this team into its success last year, that starting rotation, right? They've got Shane Bieber at the helm. We all know who he is. He started the 2019 All-Star Game, and that's really when his breakout began, won the 2020 Cy Young Award, was hurt most of 21, and came back, and as Tom mentioned, threw 200 innings that were really quality, he was good at was he good in the postseason? I don't remember. I think he had one bad start and one good start. I can was I can verify that right now. Oh, we we, we can race. Um, speed to the speed of the finish line. Game logs, postseason cumulative. All right. God. He pitched well. He pitched very, very well. Uh he went five and two thirds, two earned against the Yankees, and he went seven and two thirds, one earned against the Rays. I guess no. the question now is, do, do you kind of consider, you know, selling him at the deadline and trying to like do like a partial, like, like a trade for a guy that's still active, you know what I'm saying? Like not for prospects, but for actual like active guys. I know it's way less common at the deadline to trade for active players that are going to boost you, but you know, a, a win-win trade for a team that needs pitching and a team that also need, I don't know. This is kind of confusing. He's a free agent after next season. Oh, I thought this was this. Is the thought this no, was last? No, no, no. Oh, so we're we're chilling. Yeah, that'll yeah. be all right. Um, they got Tristan McKenzie at the two, who was pretty good last year. Uh, his breakout was a bit questionable. We talked. We've talked about like how reliable he is. Uh, obviously, he plays up in the zone really well. It's just he lets up a lot of hard contact, which can result in home runs. And home runs can really affect a player's productivity, especially at pitchers. Uh, we saw Garrett Cole this year. Um. He was still very good, but he let up a ton of home runs, and that really hurt his effectiveness. Uh, Cal Quantrill, he's just a heavy pitch to contact guy, and when you pitch to contact and have a pretty good defense behind you, you normally see good results, and that's what he has. Uh, his expected ERA over the past two seasons has both been over four. I mean, he's had a high or high twos, low three ERA in both of those seasons. Yeah, I guess that's just a guy that kind of defies the odds. Um, I mean, you, you can look like year by year, but a guy that consistently defies them is usually, you know, going to be reliable. He's not going to be like a star, but he's he's pretty good. Yeah, and I'm trying to look up Zach Pelsack right now. Apparently, I can't spell. Uh, Zach Pelsack, he punched a mound last year and he broke his hand. He's a bit of a psycho. He was really actually horrible last year. Um, If the Guardians can find a way to move on from him, I'm sure they probably will. The other started round out their rotations, Aaron Savali. I mean, yeah, I mean, they, they got a young guy. I'm not sure if it's, it's his time yet. What's his name again? I'm Daniel Espino. He's not going to yeah. be up this year. He's, he's, is he a double he's A? He's, okay. He finished out the year in single A, but he's been out. He hasn't started throwing yet. Um, He's just not ready. Yeah. I mean, this is a, a pretty complete rotation. I mean, the only two guys that really stick out are McKenzie and Bieber, but the other guys can, you know, hold their ground for, you know, a three through five position. I'm really, I'm really more leaning towards the bullpen being good. I mean, Emmanuel Classe is the best closer in baseball. James Karnshack got his swag back. It's it's done. He's he's at that closer status as well, but he's not going to be over Emmanuel Classe, but he's a great setup guy. Trevor Steffen, Nick Sandlin, Enville De Los Santos. And yell. And yell. I'm sorry. I'm taking I'm filling in for Stevs for my miss <laughs> Eli Morgan, Tim Heron, and Hunter Gaddis. And on the IL, we got Sam Hent- Henches and Cody Morris. I mean, I mean, this is a good bullpen. This is yeah. a very scrappy bullpen with guys with, with stars in him now. I mean, you got Class A. That's all I'm really looking at. That's all I'm really worried about. But uh, there's depth in here, too. And we saw how good it could be in the postseason last year. Um, oh, Cody Allen, Logan Allen. That was kind of like their only like big bullpen departure. who would just been around for a while. Um, Sam Henkes was pretty good in the bullpen last year, especially in the postseason. Again, if this bullpen just does what it did last year, it is not going to be a worry for any Cleveland fan. Yeah, I mean, they're consistently one of the best last year, probably top five in baseball when it comes to bullpens. I, 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 that's not what I'd be worried about this season as a, as a Guardians fan. Yeah, 
if I had to worry about anything for the Cleveland Guardians this year, I would just worry about the health and my depth. Uh, because that team could stay healthy. I think that they could probably repeat what they did last year, uh, for the most part, at least. Last year, I'm just pulling it up. They were fifth in ERA from bullpens. Um, they struck out the... They didn't strike out that many, but they, again, with that bullpen pitching to contact with that type of defense behind, you know what? It's effective. Yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty – it's a complete pitching staff. I think there's not really a, a place I can knock them for. Is there anything that really you can knock them for other than you talking about their health? Uh, depth. Yeah. Because really, it's – once you get past the starting rotation, if someone gets hurt, that's when you're kind of going into the – okay maybes of this organization but they're the, they're the guardians they'll call up some pitching prospect it'll be pretty good uh i know they have a couple yeah. of 2025 etas or 2024 etas that are supposed to be fairly decent pitchers i'm just pulling those up right now so i can reference them um did eli Logan morgan Allen. did league did uh eli morgan pitch did he start last year in games i thought he was a starter last year or he, he usually he opened uh, i don't know eli morgan got nice flowing locks um eli morgan very good results he started a whole game last year oh yeah uh, it pretty much exclusively out of the bullpen two years ago though he had a lot of starts okay yeah and he was not as effective so he will probably be a closer or a relief pitcher this year i mean that's i don't know this is a scrappy team do you think this is a volatile team we'll get more to it later no I don't, no. I, because I don't see it with an, uh, we'll talk about it in a couple, but I don't see it with an overly high ceiling. Yeah. But I don't see them falling too far off, of, like far from grace, like some teams in this division are capable of doing. Um, last thing before I want to touch before we talk about that, uh, we mentioned Bo Naylor and Brian Rocio. Uh, Bo Naylor is just a, they're catching prospect. He's very vulnerable to whiffing in the strike zone, high power, high risk. He's very fast. He had a four four point one home to first, which is really good for a catcher. However, he's not a good defensive catcher. And then Brian Rocheo, uh, everyday profile is a shortstop, good bat to ball skills. He's a surprisingly authoritative left handed cut for a player of his stature. I just wanted to, I wanted to read that verbatim just because I think it it kind of it gives you a good idea. You know what? He's going to swing hard, and he's got the ability to hit the ball wherever he wants it. He can hit breaking balls, go to opposite field, pull the ball. It's a good profile, but it just looks to be a little bit average, if not a little bit above average. He's a good, he's a good prospect. Essentially, got some more younger guys that are, you know, later ETA. But Bo Naylor is probably the catcher. I mean, definitely the catcher of the future, not Mike Zanino. Um, <laughs> that transition will happen sooner rather than later. Especially under our ready. predictions. Yeah. All right, Brad. You want to lead us off? Or you want me to go first? I got it. Uh, so to go for the record, I'm gonna I want to go for the record last. Okay. Um, my MVP is Jose Ramirez. It's just the matter of fact. Um, yeah. Cy Young, Shane Bieber, pretty much also a matter of fact. For breakout, I put Aaron Savali. He's a pitcher. Uh, last year he had a 44 percent whiff rate on his curveball. Uh, his cutter was pretty solid. But the thing I really liked about him that made me be like, oh, okay. It wasn't like any insane pitch he had or something like that. It was the fact he had a seven pitch mix. And they were all pretty decent pitches. Nothing extraordinary, but it was the fact that he could work to all planes of the plate. He could throw to righties. He could throw to lefties. And he just, it, there's the ability to last long in games. The ability to go deep in games. Yes, Tom loves lasting long. Um and I think that has some value, especially if Tristan McKenzie regresses a little bit. Aaron Savali can hopefully take a little bit of the load that Tristan McKenzie doesn't have this year. And then for their most important, I put a combination of Stephen Kwan and Andres Jimenez. Because if they have these sophomore slumps, then there, there goes some of the Guardians right there. Stephen Kwan is a contact-only type guy. He's going to be an occasional home run, like three. Um if he regresses, he'll still be a good contact back. If Andres Jimenez's offense regresses, though, he's a defensive second baseman. And that is a having a seven war player and a three war player are two very different things for your team because every team has a three war player. Most teams don't have a seven war player. 
I mean, I'm right around, right around you. Did you give off your, uh, your record oh, yet? 88 and 74. They also get a central tax. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, I feel like that's probably closer to their floor than their ceiling. I would say it's in the lower 40%, lower 30%. Put that like right around 50% because I don't think this is a 95 win baseball team at its best. I don't know. I mean, I really, while they do play the better teams, they also get to play. Never mind. That's not that true. I mean, they, the central tax is a real thing. I don't know. I, I'm just, the team is too good to, uh, I don't know. I'd say that's right about 50, actually. I'm not thinking about it. I'm looking back at their roster and who they got to play. The thing is, right, I'm going to go back to my volatility thing because I think that there's a potential for things to go wrong if you, they do have these sophomore slumps. And it's also this division. The, the Guardians weren't that good until the month of August and September. Yeah. That's when they really broke away from the Twins and White Sox. And who's to say that can't happen again? The, the team has experience. They know what it's like to win. They can be hungry for it. But who's to say the Twins and the Guardian or the Twins and the White Sox, excuse me, aren't going to be just as hungry? Like they just got humiliated. Yeah. I mean, I'm like right in the range. I mean, I'm, I'm at 90 and 72. I feel like that's closer to their ceiling. I feel like their ceiling is, we'll, we'll talk about it later, actually. Uh, MVP, obviously, J Ram. You got to have him as your MVP. He's probably the best player to come out of there in a while. Um, most important, I had Andres Jimenez, similar boat to you. Um, I feel like he's most likely to have a sophomore slump, more so than Stephen Kwan. So I think if he doesn't have – I'm expecting one. If he doesn't have one, the Guardians are a far better team. Cy Young, I wanted to go with a bit of a hot take. I wanted to go with Sticks instead of uh, Shane Bieber. I feel like he's not necessarily the sabermetrics guy that everyone loves, but – you know, I, he's got that that dog factor in him. You know, he's got the dog in him. I honestly like watching him pitch. I don't know. He in, he inspires me because I'm I'm a fellow skinny guy and he throws gas. <laughs> As for the breakout, I got Oscar Gonzalez. I think if he can develop his plate approach a little bit and walk more, he'd be considered one of the best in the game because he's got that crazy exit velocity and he's got crazy power. And I think if he can just walk more, he, he would be considered one of the more complete batters in the game. And that would honestly boost his OPS, his OPS plus, everything that would, you know, change his appearance as a hitter and last year uh saber metrics didn't love the results of tristan mckenzie but actually his stuff was pretty good like his fastball slider and curveball all of that it was you know eight percent above average in terms of stuff plus um stuff is the most effective predictor of success um and so maybe you know what there is some con continuation to that yes Got to have love for Tristan McKenzie. I, I just like, I liked him coming up out of the minors, but let me get up Stebbs' record and predictions. So shockingly, MVP, Jose Ramirez, Cy Young, Shane, breakout, Oscar Gonzalez. Um, and then most important, I he had Tristan McKenzie. Um, oh, my breakout was Oscar Gonzalez. He agreed with me. Yeah, okay. so we're right on the same page. Um, he had them going 93 and 69. I feel like that's closer to their ceiling. I think if not, that is their ceiling uh, as a team, maybe 94, but I, I think 93 is probably about their ceiling. I think maybe about 84 is their floor. I think they're like a 10 win volatility window. I was going to say closer to like 90 or 81 and 81. It's just like, yeah, I mean, their, their floor is better than the twins and white Sox. Yeah. It's just there could also – everything could go wrong again. Bieber could get hurt. McKenzie could regress. It's just like the kids are young. There's, like, yeah, but there, there's – I would say there's more reinforcements to this team than I, – I would say significantly more reinforcements than the two other threatening teams in the yeah. NFL Central. So I would say the record being slightly above 500 is probably the most – like maybe like 82 and 80. That, that's probably nitpicking, but I really don't – I really like – I think they're probably about 82 and 80 to a 94 win team, 93 win team. Okay. Um, no, I, I agree with that. It's just it's like if the Guardians go down with an injury, they have someone to replace. Maybe besides Jose Ramirez, the Twins go down with you know a Correa injury. That's really bad for them. The yeah. White Sox just do what they did last year. That's exactly. really bad for yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. And the Guardians can capitalize. So I do. I I see where you're coming from there. 